this is just like a small example. So machine learning is learning from examples and experiences. And we're, so we see it everywhere, whether it's on email, you know, the autocomplete. Uh, I believe you all use uh, Gmail or have any access to Gmail. So you can see that the autocomplete gets improves all the time and it completes you and not only the word that you want to spell rather than uh, the actual uh, sentences or, or phrases common used phrases also it uh, knows how to adapt himself to someone specific so if you're always saying I don't know you you'll sign your um, when you start an email so I start with I trust all is well with you so that will be my first complete versus others they will say I hope you're doing well or any other thing so it really learns us and it learns how how we behave this is the whole machine learning also here we see the Google Translate so it used to be really bad but it improved like the example here used to have really funny translations um, I know about um, I remember when I was young um, you know, well I believe all of you have seen the Fresh Prince of Bel Air so the once they translated the pool house as pool the game so it was a house of pool so the translation wasn't so good but it keeps on improving and now the translation knows how to see catchphrases and to understand the the context and a lot of the times you also can adapt the the translation if it wasn't a good translation so this is also something that is only by machine learning um, and the last example we see here is on the Google Photos that you can actually search for this example is for your dog but I can search for my son I have loads of pictures you can imagine so I can actually search for for his name and I'll see all his pictures because the machine learns his face so it's everywhere the machine learning and we just need to use it and so you're competing with the best experience a customer has ever had the people everyone is using their phones everywhere they're connected everywhere the, the experience is not a uh, solely for computer when you're at home it's everywhere you keep using it and people want you have to adapt to the people needs to the users needs so this is a really nice story about Hilton what they did so we're all stuck at home basically so let's imagine we're going to Mexico Maldives Thailand you name it because we can pretend that's the only thing we can do now so pretend you're packing your bags you're putting everything in you're going to the airport you take a long flight you get to where you want to go you get to Mexico you see the beach and you you just want to go into the water because it's hot and you put your sunscreen and your hat and you want to try and taste all the lovely food and 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 see and explore the city and everything and then you get to the hotel and boom there's a queue of four people in front of you that you have to wait in line and uh, vacation mode off or pause so what Hilton did they saw that this is a, a that experience is something that's very important so they did a, a something unique that you can made an app and, and a resource that you can choose your room you can check in from anywhere so you can use your phone to check into your room so you don't have to stand in line you basically go to your room you know where which room you're at you know where it is you just go you click you get in and that's it you don't need to stand in a queue and it's really easy and the experience is different and people are willing to pay and want a more advanced experience a more unique experience and a more a, a tailor-made experience for the for the user so which brings us up to the three parts that we see as a as important in in the new experience so the first one is to help me and it's to make it faster we're in the I don't know what generation we're in now but no one has time no one wants to wait no one wants everyone wants it here and now and if you have a question you won't wait to to ask your next door neighbor or to ask your parents you'll just go and google it you'll go you'll go online you'll ask on social media you won't wait you want everything fast know me better so 
you want us to know what exactly you're looking for and not be just, you know, a give out, be the same as others. You want the, you want the, the company to know you. You want the product to, to speak to you. And wow me everywhere. Like I said, we're with our phones. We want everything with us. We don't want to wait for it. And we have a few examples if we drill in deeper. So to help me faster, um, so we see an increase. This is this is pretty old. These numbers, the figures you can imagine, only go in, only increase, only go up. Uh, so we see increase in the same day shipping searches. So also now in the corona, everybody's sitting at home. If you have an option of getting something tomorrow versus getting it next week, even if the price is different, you might also lean to getting it tomorrow, even if you pay more. People want it here and now. Uh, also 100%, 150% of increase in travel searches for today and tonight. Uh, I must say that when we just got to Ireland, we wanted to, I, um, we live now in Ireland, and we wanted to go on a trip. So I ordered a room, you know, it was for, la for tomorrow night. We got there and I accidentally chose today. So we got there, we had, we had no room, it was really sad. But the thing is that people wanted here and now um, three times ex a increase in open now, open now searches. So I'm sure you've all tried numerous times to see what's open now, what can deliver if I want food, what can deliver now, what is open now if I want a pharmacy, which one is open now. Uh, it's something that is really important to us these days. Um, we don't want to wait. Um, which brings us to a really, really, really important point and really easy to, to detect. Uh, the average time it takes to fully load a mobile site, a mobile page, is 24 seconds. We see in the US most of them upload a, in 10 seconds, but fully load in 24 seconds. People rather a, not wait and they'll go to a different site if you're not fast enough. We have this a, this uh, site you can check on on test my eye my site sorry and you can check there the speed you'll get all the information about your site so please feel free to do that it's free of charge it's very very important for the user because if I have an if I have two sites if I want to buy whatever I want to buy a, a shirt or I want to buy a phone there's more than one company that will sell it to me and if I try to open your site and it takes too long, I'll just close it, go to a different site. I can't be bothered. And this is where we're at. These are, these are the times what we're talking about. Extremely important. Make sure that your, your site opens up really quickly. Know me better. So for this, I must say that um, when I uh, started about a... Uh, a decade ago in the industry so people used to say are you all these annoying ads that I see online all these pop-ups and everything and then I used to say I don't make in the Israeli market I work only in the international market so it's not me don't complain to me now it's not the case so don't tell anybody I do work only on the Israeli market um, so no one likes no one likes all these ads but we do like ads that are relevant to us so if I'm looking to buy a car, a Hyundai, for example, um, I want to see an ad if there's a sale coming up. Like if I wait, if I know what I want to buy and there's next week a sale, I want to know it. And there'll be it will be really relevant and important for me to know it. If I want to buy a house, if I want to buy a, a, a specific shirt, if I want to buy anything you want to buy, anything you're interested in, if you've got terrible back pains, and and all of a sudden you see you see a, you know some cure you have been sleeping for two days and all of a sudden you see this say uh, I don't know ointment or you see a cream or or physiotherapy something that will, can help you you're really excited about it and you like to see that ad so it's always about being relevant and about being about showing you what you want to see um, so here you can see an example of two shoppers. A one that is interested in in comparing a Hyundai versus others to see what he's getting, what he isn't, um, to see what machinery it has inside, what kind of I don't know stereo system, 
a horsepower i don't know don't understand a lot about cars but you know what the unique unique things about it versus very stereotyped a, a woman that well we like the color of the car so the, you need to give a different message so what Hyundai did in this case they gave a shopper number one they gave him on a um a, a comparison between different companies of the same SUV a sort of type and to the second shopper they gave a where's the where's the closest place you can buy it or you can go see it and test drive it so they have two different landing pages and it's extremely important to have different message to different people because different people have different intent like we said before wow me everywhere so this is just an example of uh, Domino's Pizza. Um, they say that they're a tech company that makes pizza. 60% of their sales come from online. Um, I'm, I believe that you've experienced this. They work everywhere they work, whether it's, it's they have like 15 ways you can order a pizza and not, uh, not by going there and from, uh, physically ordering it. So you can order it via a watch or a phone or a computer or a tablet or through an app or through web or, you know, various places. And it's very easy. It's, it's extremely a, a user friendly. And that is also very important to be everywhere. Um, so these are really extremely important points that you have to take into consideration when you're when you're thinking about your product and when you're thinking about how to move forward with it. Um, so these are the three major things we see as being a really strong combination. Um, and so to conclude, we really want to see you in all the various platforms that we have and make sure that you understand that everybody's in a different place, whether it's you're seeing someone uh, on the TV screen, on the phone, on the go, on the when you're in the office or, or anything like that, you have different intent and therefore you need a different message. So make sure you take advantage of the whole the whole uh, process and the whole combination of signals that we get all around. And that's it. If there are any questions. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, Dalia. We hear about uh, AI basically in each and every industry. We hear about autonomous cars. We hear about personal assistance. We hear about uh, you know um, web events. Um, AI is basically everywhere in security, in mobile, in sports. But what is AI? What is the definition of AI? Well. AI is basically an attempt of a computer to simulate human intelligence. And why is it so? Why would computers want to, uh, you know, simulate human intelligence, human brain? Because our brain is, is really smart. Our brain is composed of billions of neurons that collect data and process data by interacting with other neurons. Here are some facts about the brain that uh, uh, might, might be a bit surprising. Each one of us has about 86 billion neurons in his, uh, in his brain, and each neuron can interact with 200,000 neurons. It means that the amount of junctions that we have in our brain is more than all the stars and all the junctions in our uh, in our uh, 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 in our world, basically, uh, each each of us um, thinks about fifty thousand thoughts per day. Think about this: fifty thousand. The speed in the brain can get to four hundred and thirty kilometers per hour. It's more than any Porsches. Is the Porsches that I know? I don't know much. So our brain is really is really smart, and, and a computer tries to simulate that. Let's see a sample of that. Uh, imagine that you are uh, walking in this uh, nice uh, shoe shop, and into the shop, apparently, a lady comes in. And this lady is 
is telling us something without talking. I mean, we look at her and we see that she's young, uh, pretty, uh, well-dressed. And basically what we do, we just um, label her in our mind as, as a fashionista. And without talking, we, we know what to do. We know what to offer her. We know what kind of you know, shoes she might uh, be interested in. We know uh, what is approximately the, the, uh, you know, the pricing that she's looking for. So she didn't say anything, but we got signals from her and we processed these signals in our brain and we came to a conclusion. So machines are trying to do the same. What is machine learning? It is an attempt of, of, of machine to learn from the experience without being programmed. So the main difference between machine learning and, and just, just a system is that a system has rules. You know, if A happens, makes B. If B happens, makes C. But with machine learning, there are no rules. We expect the computer to learn from the past experience, from the past experience and to take uh, decisions by himself based on, the, uh, based on the experience that he has. So basically what in this case we would do, we would tell the computer, hey, we have an experience with selling to fashionistas. Here are samples of fashionistas that you know purchased in the past. Each one of them, uh, we can tell exactly what they bought, when they bought, how often they buy, what is the average order value, um, a lot of data. And we expect the computer that when the lady that we showed before comes into the store, he will automatically conclude that she is a fashionista and he will offer her the uh, equipment, that, uh, the, the things that we want to sell that, uh, that fashionistas usually buy. Within the machine learning uh, space, we have another world called deep learning, which is a subset of machine learning. And over there, we expect the computer to learn even though we did not train. We didn't inject any data into the model. We just expect the computer to learn from um, not labeled uh, or, or unstructured data. And for that, you usually need a lot of data and a lot of training for the model to be, to be accurate. I think that the most Im important or at least impressive uh, move in terms of machine learning happened 23 years ago, 1997, where when, you know, Deep Blue, the uh, computer, IBM computer, uh, managed to beat uh, Gary Kasparov's, Kasparov in chess. That was like the first time that we saw that computers can be smarter than the best chess player in the world. Today it's quite common because we know that computers, you know, make faster calculation, can take decisions faster. But, uh, you know, a generation ago, it wasn't that clear. So how do we use AI in order to make e-commerce uh, stores uh, happy? Um, we in Adscale have a technology that uh, weaves the power of the AI technology and uses that into, um, advertising your stores automatically across Google, Facebook, and Instagram, optimizing the campaigns automatically, and generating an average return on advertising spend of 1,000%. In today's presentation, I'm going to present the system, show you the system, and show you some samples of happy customers. So basically, um, Edscale integrates with all the most common, um, you know, uh, e-commerce platforms. You can see the names on the screen right now. There are others as well. And we, by having this integration, we can get signals from the, from the store that neither Facebook or Google has when, it, when they come to advertise your store. And we use those signals in order to optimize the uh, campaigns and in order to um, maximize the revenue in your advertising budget. How do we do that? Basically, here's the steps. Here are the steps. Step number one, we plan the advertising mix that will make you the most uh, successful uh, return on, 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 on spend. And 
In order to do that, we use signals that are coming from the store. We learn the order history. We analyze the order value, the um, AOV, APV, or average product value, the repeat customer uh, purchase, the repeat customer rate, which products are sold with which products. So we have quite a lot of data which is derived from your order history. And on the other hand, we use data gathered from thousands of other stores in the same vertical market and in the same geographics that are using us in order to create, uh, in order to learn what works best, where to invest our money, in which channels, where do we get a better return on ad spend? And Google, Facebook, shopping, search, Facebook, search analytics, uh, sorry, search remarketing, display, uh, on which days, on which time, to which device, locations, I mean, there's a lot of data over there. So we start with learning your store, and since most of AI uh, algorithms takes time to learn, we don't want to waste your time. So we start by learning and by predicting what will happen based on the data that we have, even before we started running your campaigns. Phase number two is to create the ads automatically. I will show you in a few seconds how do we do that. Phase number three is to optimize the ads automatically. I will elaborate about it in, in a few minutes as well. In stage number four, we sync. We sync between the ads and between the, um, uh, the, the store. So any change in the store will be reflected to the ads automatically. And we analyze the data and we slice and dice it. But let's start with having a short introduction to Adscale. Let me just... Uh, get into the one of the uh, sample shops that I have here. One sec, please. Okay. So I have here, let me just reopen it just to make sure that the session is, uh, is not broken thanks to security. Okay. So what we can see here is a, uh, is a demo shop that I, uh, I made for this uh, presentation. And in the uh, right hand side, I, uh, I, I'm going to make now a new campaign. So um, our, our idea with AdScale is to enable anyone that can read and write to advertise like a pro across all channels. Let me show you how we do that. You start by creating a campaign and you just give it a name, like uh, say summer sale would be a nice name. And then we ask you to tell us where would you like to advertise? And let's assume that I would like to advertise in the US. In the next phase, Eskel asks, asks us, um, do we have any preference in terms of you know, gender or, or age? We can define that. Um, and then we uh, should define what types of ads we have we can actually have three different types of ads. Homepage ads, which are basically ads that are, the landing page is the homepage. Product ads that are quite unique because with product ads, we um, gather, we suck the information from the store itself, the product name, the product uh, price, the description, the, the, you know, the pictures, everything. And we can also make a custom page edge, which is basically ads that are landing on any landing page. It could be uh, a category page or a search page or, or maybe even an external landing page, any page. Uh, let me uh, quickly create uh, um, like two of them, one homepage ad and one product ad. Let's see how easy it is. Uh, so in order to create the product ads, I uh, basically need to define which, uh, you know, which uh, audience I would like to target. I can have remarketing audience and also new traffic. I define that I would like to have in the remarketing, to have a remarketing for page visits, meaning people that visited the page, add to cart, meaning abundant carts, and purchases, people who purchased in the, in the past. I'm going to advertise for all of those. And I would like to have like new traffic based on lookalike and similar audience for the ones that visited our page. A uh, custom audience I can upload, like, you know, lists. And I can also define audience by, um, by interest. So, for instance, I can search for 
shirts and anything which is related to shirts and apparel and dresses, etc. etc. Uh, in the next phase, since this is a home page ad, I can, uh, you know, I can upload my uh, creative, so I can define how to fly, uh, you know, um, media library, which types of, uh, you know, pictures I would like to make. I just upload out to the system. I can also, you know, create a single image or, or, or a video uh, ad. And then I just pick up the right content for myself with SQL. We have 20 different types of ads written by a, by a copywriter for each and every industry. So you can define between, you know, emotional ad, and we have two copies for that, version one and version two, or funny ads, or, you know, young ads, or, or whatever. So you can either pick up one of the ads that, you know, fits your needs, or if you wish, you can also just really type your uh, your text into the ads. You can, in the right hand side, you can see how the ads look like. Obviously we, uh, you know, we match the um, pictures with the different ad uh, formats and with the different placements. So you can definitely see how it looks like. Uh, and we can add keywords. I mean, we can, the, the system automatically takes keywords from the um, Google Search Console. So we are connected to the Google Search Console via API. We analyze the search console and we, um, using um, NLP algorithms, we take keywords that could be relevant for your specific store based on the uh, organic searches that led to your store. But you can also add, uh, you can help the system by adding your own keywords like, uh, I don't know, dresses and, 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 and et cetera, et cetera. So, so far we made our homepage ad. You can see it on the right hand side. Now I'm going to make a, a product ad. The process is, is quite similar. The only difference is that with the product ads, the system grabs the product. And as you can see, we have the AI selection. The AI selection is the, uh, the, the um, um, algorithms that recommend which products are going to make the best return on investment based on the data that we have, your past history of orders, the data that we gathered from the uh, advertising uh, channels, this is all in the AI selection. And the AI selection is dynamic. We might add or you know, reduce products based on the uh, 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 monitoring of the uh, results that we have. So you can either choose the AI selection or not, or you can choose the AI selection and maybe add other products that you want to, you know, you want to add. It's all, it's all open to you. You can see on the right hand side exactly what you've chosen. You can add the text just like before and define exactly when would you like to advertise. Like if you don't want to advertise on Sunday, just for instance, you just wipe it or add it back, you know. Um, and then you define your budget and your advertising uh, goal. Usually, usually you wish to maximize the revenue. You can also set the uh, minimum return on ad spend that you wish to get. And then that's it. Like what you can see that within, I think it took me not more than two or three minutes. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see my uh, summer sale uh, with the uh, homepage ads. And we've created new traffic by interest. Let me just close this one, maybe some more space. So we have new traffic by interest, new traffic by lookalike, remarketing by add to cart, remarketing by purchases, uh, um, remarketing by visit, search campaign. And in the product ads, we also have, of course, shopping campaign, uh, meaning automatic creation of a merchant center and, uh, and, and the shopping campaigns themselves. So what you've seen is that within a few minutes, we managed to, um, we managed to create uh, quite extensive campaigns across all networks like a pro without having the need to hire a media agency or without having the need to uh, be a, you know, a marketing guru. At any point of time, you can click edit and you can, uh, you know, uh, edit anything you wish, any ad you wish, any content you wish. I mean, it's all open for you. 
you just click edit and on the right hand side you can change your settings and you basically create campaigns within minutes like if it usually takes a lot of time to create a search campaign and a shopping campaign and remarketing and then to go to Facebook you don't have to do that just use ad scale and within five minutes max you have well-designed campaign well-structured campaign across all channels easily but this is only the start and I'm going now back to my presentation the next phase is to discuss the uh, the uh, optimization and with the optimization we um, I would like to share with you first of all um, an understanding of what optimization means because um, obviously optimization is 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 equal to prioritization we have to create something from what we can create we cannot get, create we cannot create something from what we don't have so I think that the illustration of the um, of the heat map represents the the ID and what you see in this heat map is that um, we have a matrix of you know days and hours the green areas are the good uh, good uh, you know hours the red ones are the bad ones so in the green ones we get um, a lot of revenue and the cost of uh, acquisition is low in the red ones we have uh, bad revenue and the cost of acquisition is high and the other um, the other uh, call in the middle represent something in the middle and in the end of the day what we need to do is to maximize the revenue and find the uh, most effective mix in order to maximize uh, the revenue the issue is that this picture is not just a single picture we have a different picture different data for each and every object I mean Facebook might look like that totally different than what we saw before and Google search uh, sorry Google shopping might look might look like that so you know different results in different hours and search might look like that and the same for Instagram but we also have a different picture for every campaign and for every ad and and for every ad per gender per device so we have a lot of cubes of data in our data and what ad scale tries to do is to you know create a very good picture out of all the opportunities that we have to play offensive on the good hours to play defensive on the bad hours and to find the optimal mix to uh, spend uh, your uh, advertising uh, budget uh, across uh, or along the months and with the uh, goal of you know maximizing the revenue and the way that we do that is with algorithms and automated systems so we use uh, linear regression in order to uh, generate a, a distribution for each and every uh, campaign um, the distribution gives us uh, the correlation between the uh, budget that we are going to give and the revenue that we are going to get uh, having a level of significance of 95 percent uh, based on that once we have a clear map of what we can get per each and every campaign we can run mathematical models that can help us to define how to you know split the budget along the months and between the channels and between the campaigns and along the day with one goal get the maximum revenue possible it's all being done automatically you don't have to touch it ad scale moves budgets from campaign a to campaign b or from channel a to channel b from facebook to google and from google to instagram and vice versa and um, if like in eight o'clock in the evening the system will recognize that the correlation between the cpc how much money you pay per click and the position in google for instance is much better than this value in in the same time on different days it will uh, conclude that our you know competitors uh, ended their budget for today and when their agency is at home uh, you know uh, watching tv the system will increase the budgets and reduce the bids and collect all the impressions for no money and this is one sample out of hundreds of samples that i can give you that happens every day so there's a lot of 
you know, potential in the interday changes that we make, and we make a lot of changes per day in order to maximize the revenue. And every time that the uh, budget optimizer runs, once he, you know, divides the uh, budgets, he initially initiates the uh, bid optimization module that um, operates three levels of AI. It, on one hand, when we have objects that have enough data, uh, we uh, try to learn the correlation between the budget, the bid, and the revenue. So we create a regression line, we call it, and we, when we have enough data, we can conclude based on that. When we don't have enough data, we use unsupervised learning, meaning we create clusters. Uh, so if, for instance, we have two ad sets, both created three clicks, one of them um, has one you know, conversion and the other one has no conversion, uh, then what happens in this case is that you don't have enough statistics, enough data to conclude anything. But if we gather a few of them together, a few that are relevant with the same, you know, selling the same things, together then for the cluster we have enough data and maybe the cluster now has 30 clicks and six conversions and this is enough to create conclusion on a cluster level so now we can we can budget the cluster and we can use statistical inference algorithms in order to bid smartly so we use that as well and we also use reinforcement learning in order to um, um, try to inject anomalies when we think that there are opportunities that we're not try, you know, when we never tried them before. So we try to, you know, challenge our model and not only stay within what we already know, because what we already know is, is biased. It is based on the data that we entered. It's based on our settings. So uh, in, in some cases, when it makes sense, we try to challenge our model and try to learn if there are new blue oceans that we uh, that we can find and by that to improve the uh, the results so we use budget optimization and autonomous bid optimization but we also improve the campaign structure we improve the um, you know the genders and the age and you know the everything that needs to be improved in order to maximize the revenue uh, and it all comes to the uh, results in the end of the day with, with you know, creating and with ad scale, you can create uh, a lot of revenue for your store. You can get, get more customers and you can save a lot of time and a lot of money spent on uh, managing the campaigns either internally in-house or with a media agency. These costs can be definitely saved. Um, one important thing super important thing that I wish to explain is the cross-platform analytics. With Edscale, you can see the um, performance of your campaigns in one screen. So basically, you just go to our dashboard, you, um, and you can see, you can see exactly uh, how much cost and how much orders and what are the revenues and the return on your investment. You can, uh, you can filter that by, uh, you know, by, ads or by channels or by devices or by locations so um, you have one stop shop to view your entire information which is great because all of your google and facebook data is in one place but this is only a small part for what we give you here because with ad scale this is the only place where you can see your real results this is thanks to our unique technology that matches correlates between order numbers and the uh, conversions in Google and Facebook. So um, in many cases, uh, you know, you can see that sometimes you have a situation like you have with this order. Um, order number 3459 for $79. Uh, someone clicked on an ad in Instagram and then clicked on an ad in Google Shopping and made the purchase. And now Facebook says it's all mine and google says it's all mine but you do not have 160 dollars in, in 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 the store you just have 80. so the only way to understand that this is what we call a duplicated conversion is to match it with the order number and with ed scale the you know the data that you see the uh, 
the dashboards that you see are clean. They are showing you the numbers after we wiped out all the duplications. And it's up to you if you want to attribute it to the first click or the last click, it's up to you. But the data that you see is real. So if you see in Google and Facebook sometimes that you have $100,000 in Google and $100,000 in Facebook, but when you come to the store, you just have 150,000. The 50,000 that are missing are actually the duplicated uh, conversions. And it's always about between 25 to 40%. With ad scale, you can see your real numbers. You can see exactly how much you earned from, uh, from advertising. And you can slice and dice it, as I said, by device, by location, by gender, by age, by basically any, any segment that you wish to, to have. Um, so this is an important part about um, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the cost platform analytics. Uh, it's important to mention that our pricing model is based on success. So we put our money where our mouth is. You only pay us for uh, you know, the deals that we uh, made you, and you have full transparency because you can see the orders in your store and you can match it with your conversions in Google and Facebook. So um, whatever we show you is, is, is real, it's clean, it's without any duplications, and we only charge you for sales that we make you. You can see our pricing on, the, uh, on our website, but uh, this is definitely a pricing that uh, matches between our interests and your interests. The more you sell, the more we earn, the more we are both happy. Um, so I just want to share with you some of our uh, customers uh, you know, data, uh, as much as the slide can give me. You can see uh, customers um, in few countries. You can see the return on, of advertising spend they had in the last 30 days. Um, and as you can see, we definitely can create a lot of sales for you while saving you time, money, and campaign management uh, costs. So, um, Almost out of time, I would just want to mention that um, if you want to try Edscale, then uh, you can definitely do that. You will get 30 days free trial. This is Julie. You can uh, just please write her email address and just write her an email and she will help you to, uh, um, you know, connect. I mean, you can also do it from the internet very easily, just, you know, register via the internet www.adscale.com but if not just you know if you have any question just write julie and she will um she will help you to register you get 30 days free trial and another small present after you register but i will not reveal it uh, now so uh, that's all for today thank you for uh, participating and thank you for uh, joining um, if you have any question, just, uh, you know, uh, text me, uh, in the, uh, in the chat privately or for everyone. And, uh, and I will be happy to uh, answer any question that you might, uh, that you might have. So there's one question about the, uh, okay. So there's one question about the, uh, how quickly can we make the, uh, 1000%? First of all, 1,000% is our average. Some of them are making more, some of them are making less. But it, de it's, it definitely takes time. It usually can take three months, four months, five months, six months, I don't know. It could be on the first month as well. Be patient. Uh, technology works. And if you have enough patient, you will see amazing results. It will not take ages, but uh, we are not magicians. We are just good software engineers. So. If you give us time, you will see results you never saw before. Um, let the statistics work for you. Let the technology work for you. Other questions? Question about the pricing. The pricing is, uh, you can find the price list on our website, www.adscale.com. Um, and it, it is based, as I said, on your, on your uh, revenue and only the revenue that you generate from us, okay? So we're only talking about 
deals that came from Edscale that we can show you that uh, came from our ads. And after, you know, wiping out and deleting all the duplicated conversions. So it's clean and it is transparent and you can see that. Okay, everyone, so uh, that's all for today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for participating. Should you have any question for me, um, you can see my email on the uh, screen right now. And uh, I wish you a lot of success with uh, e-commerce and we are here to help you with uh, advertising uh, and getting your uh, store to the next, uh, to the next level. Thank you so much.